joined with some other committees, is uh, hereby called to order since it's already 10 a.m. Uh, I I believe that Senator Marcos is already present online, so I'd like to thank her for joining me today. Uh, for the for today's hearing, we have only we have uh, we have uh, put in the agenda only one uh, specific bill on the creatives industry, authored by Senator Marcos, but. Uh, I think we have a we have a lot of uh, resource persons present. So, can I ask now the committee secretary to make their presence, their online presence of record by mentioning their names and organizations? Secretary, Madam Secretary, go ahead. Thank you, sir. Magdang umaga po sa ating lahat. Thank you for allowing me to acknowledge our resource persons for today's public hearing. From the Department of Trade and Industry, we have Undersecretary Rafaelita Aldaba, Mr. Kenneth Bunas, Ms. Joy Belkazin, Mr. Antonio Sidayao, and Mr. Noni Agulto. From the IPO field, we have Attorney Emerson Cuyo. From the Department of Tourism, we have Attorney Lucille Karen Malilong Isberto. Attorney Viveca Lopez, Sherwin Manuel, and Ms. Maria Cristina Shuko. From the National Parks Development Committee, we have Attorney Sheriff Phoebe Dubal. From the Department of Science and Technology, we have Mr. Julius Liano Jr. and Mr. Janelli Kaya. From the Department of Labor and Employment, we have Attorney Ramon Saura III. From the Department of Education, we have Ms. Daisy Atienza, Mr. Jen Isaac Hilario, Mr. Ronnie Baldos, Mr. Sam Zoliven, and Ms. Eileen Supnad. From the National Economic and Development Authority, we have Mr. Ranel Ram Cheng and Ms. Thelma Manuel. From the National Commission for the Culture and the Arts, we have Ms. Marichu Teliano. From the National Historical Commission of the Philippines, we have Mr. Ian Christopher Alfonso. From the Film Development Council of the Philippines, we have Ms. Rachel Villaluna. From the National Film Archives of the Philippines, we have Mr. Don Gervin Arawan and Ms. Vivian Visaya. From the private sector, we have from the Business Processing Association of the Philippines, Mr. Ricky Salvador. From the Animation Council of the Philippines Incorporated, we have Ms. Marilyn Montano. From the Artists' Welfare Project Incorporated, we have Ms. Jenny Bonto and Mr. Dennis Marazigan. And Ms. From Asociacion ng Musikong Pilipino Foundation, we have Attorney Dulce Punzalan. From the Association of of Accredited Advertising Agencies Philippines, we have Mr. Melvin Magada. From the Cebu Furniture Industries Foundation Incorporated, we have Ms. Ruby Lutan and Ms. Lovely Flores. From Created Content Creators Association of the Philippines, we have Mr. Mago Del Mundo. From Creative Economy Council of the Philippines, we have Mr. Paulo Mercado. From the Game Developer Developers Asso Association of the Philippines, we have Mr. Alvin Juban. From Interguild Alliance, we have Mr. Paulo Villaluna, Mr. Carlito Sigion Reina, Mr. Ms. Patti Lapus, and Mr. Benjamin Padero. From the International Council on Monuments and Sites, we have Ms. Marie Maria Cristina Paterno. From the National Live Events Coalition of the Philippines, we also have Ms. Shakira Symes. And from the Philippine Fashion Coalition, we have Ms. Carissa Cruz Evangelista, Ms. Jackie Aquino, Ms. Esme Palaganas, and Ms. Emmy Inglis. From the Philippine Motion Picture Producers Association of the Philippines, we have Ms. Malu Santos, Mr. Joey Reyes, Mr. Quark Inares, Mr. Jojo O'Connor, Mr. Icy Torrio, Attorney Kat Maniego, Attorney Georgie Alonso, and Ms. And an attorney and Janelle Yu. 
From the Red Roots Artists Cooperative, we have Mr. John Paul Don Gonya. And from the United Print Media Group Philippines, we have Ms. Barbie Atienza. That's all, sir. Thank you, sir. So thank you to all for your uh, presence. Thank you, uh, Secretary Jingle. Okay, so it would be impossible for me to uh, memorize your names, no? Uh, so if, if, uh, if you want to say something, just call my attention na lang and then mention your name and your organization. So in the meantime, uh, we will recognize the author. Uh, to be very specific, we are now going, we are tackling Senate Bill number 411 uh, entitled An Act to Develop and Promote the Creative Industries of the Philippines introduced by Senator Amy Marcos. So the author is now recognized, Senator Marcos. Yes, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chairman, and uh, to all my friends and associates in the private sector who have led the creative industries from uh, the very, very beginning. Um, may I simply say that this bill has become ever more urgent um, during the pandemic, given that uh, the creatives have been uh, among the hardest hit um, by the unemployment in the wake of the pandemic. Um, it is exceedingly difficult to get jobs in the present day, although um, online activity has ratcheted up. The reality is that sidelined workers have begun to lose their networks. There is a struggle to remain current, particularly in the digitally driven animation and game sectors. There are new, a new skills of atrophied and there is a very clear uh, decline in reading comprehension even after only a single year. So uh, the other concern has been uh, the losses of jobs concentrated among low wage workers. So the hardest hit have also been the most vulnerable and they are now uh, threatened uh, by replacement uh, through automation. It is also exceedingly difficult for them to learn new skills and training has actually declined and retraining has not always been relevant or specific to jobs. The uh, second uh, concern has been the effect of the CREATE bill, which has particularly uh, affected the animation and software industry since so many of these companies are located in various echo zones. Creative content, according to the bill uh, or the law, is part of tier three activities which are supposed to be given the most generous incentives. However, it does not seem to be very, very clear in the bill, and perhaps the chairman can uh, uh, look into this, if the uh, creative industries uh, qualify as creative content ge generators within the strategic investment priorities plan. Kasi di ba po, yun yung basehan ng pagbibigay ng incentives pero yung uh, definition ng creatives, content generators, and other productions are uh, not uh, well understood. At this point, of course, it's a brand new bill, but perhaps our private sector can um, uh, contribute to the definition of the same. And finally, we are all aware that... Um, the um, smuggling and infringement issues that have occurred during the pandemic have ballooned and uh, simply hit our local uh, uh, creatives even harder. As the Bureau of Customs continue to imp impound work um, coming in from Filipinos overseas and vice versa, refuse to allow uh, the export, for example, of visual art and paintings. So, nadagdagan pa yung problema, Mr. Chair, mula nung pandemic and our last hearing between uh, these triple threats of COVID, the CREATE, as well as the increase in smuggling and copyright and IPO infringement. Maraming salamat po. Thank you, uh, Senator Marcos. Uh, Committee Secretary, are there, are there uh, additional resource persons who arrived uh, later? Sir, do we need to, do we need to uh, acknowledge them too? Okay, sir. If it's okay, sir. Yeah, meron? Yes, meron pa po, sir. Uh, go ahead, go ahead. Uh, uh, 
from the Film Development Council of the Philippines, we have Miss Mary Lisa Dino. From the Department of Education, we have Mr. Jason Tadeo. From the Department of Trade and Industry, we have Ms. Rea Matute. So far, sir, you know, number, sir. So thank you. Okay, so we have heard this before, but uh, we heard this bill together with uh, many other bills. So we were we, we just gave it a short period of time. So, and uh, this is a new a new idea. Uh, my impression is we will be recognizing a an industry as a new industry uh, some something which is composed of already existing uh, industries or economic activities which we will now be putting under one uh, category so yeah the last hearing was september 3 2019 papala so i'm sorry for the delay uh senator marcos <laughs> okay so okay so wala na abutan po ng budget yan pagkatapos na covid <laughs> so who wants to to comment on the bill because we we ha i have read the bill so i have already read the bill my staff uh, has read the bill so we need your your comments uh please uh on the bill so who wants to go ahead Raise, raise, raise your hand or state your name. Si Lisa na lang. Lisa, you want to go ahead? Because I know, kilala ko papa mo eh. Sige, go ahead. Hindi ko nga doon po. Hi, Senator. The Film Development Council of the Philippines um, strongly support... But volume, volume, please. Volume. Clear na po ba? Ay. Hello? Yes. Am I clear yes, na okay. po? Okay. <laughs> The Film Development Council of the Philippines strongly supports the efforts of the Committee on Trade, Commerce, and Entrepreneurship to champion and promote the development of the creative industry by coming up with legislations that would open opportunities for the industry to remain culturally and economically relevant. Likewise, we commend and acknowledge the committee as, um, as we table uh, the proposed act to develop and promote the creative industries of the Philippines we are optimistic that the discussions would be thorough and comprehensive to ensure that this initiative would be a good boost and support for the industry as we strive to be recognized and valued both in the local and international arena. The bill sought to establish Creative Industries Development Council to formulate the development and promotion of original Filipino content and protection and commercialization of Filipino intellectual corp property. This will empower our young and innovative entrepreneurs as the government capitalizes on their creative ideas and product. It's about time po that we capitalize on our talents po talaga and for us to really institutionalize this. These forge a permanent and perceptive plan that shall contribute to the progress of the creative industries in the Philippines. These creative industries like the film and audiovisual industry are instrumental not just in... Okay na po. Um, not just in generating economic growth, but of promotion and popularization of the social cultural aspects of the country. Um, however, um, while we find the Senate bill to be generally in order, we would like to understand better the position that the Creative Industries Develop Council um, uh, will be uh, as vis-a-vis -vis the existing government agencies. Um, it should be a uh, we um, it should be established as a national public uh, policy making and regulatory agency working with other government agencies for the following purposes uh, 
setting of national priority goals through a whole of government approach for the creative industries through the national government agencies having jurisdiction over the private sec sectors within the creative industries. Ito po ang kailangan namin ngayon kasi marami na po sa aming mga ahensya ang may mga kanikaniyang mga inisyatibo at mga programa para po sa industry ang sinasaklawan namin. Pero kailangan po namin ng alignment, kailangan po namin ng collaboration, kailangan po natin pag-isahin at mas maging streamlined ang ginagawang efforts ng iba't ibang ahensya para po um, wala po tayong duplication at uh, mas ma-amplify pa po natin ang, um, ang, at mas maging cohesive po ang ating approach para to empower our um, creative um, industries. To create policies to be utilized for the government agencies for promotion, support, and growth of the creative industries. Streamline the, the, the line communication and coordination of all government agencies and private sectors covered under the proposed initiative for systematic approach in policy and program implementation and the establishment of a special fund which should be made available for disbursement on the account of government agencies having jurisdictions over the private sectors involved. The functions of the council should hopefully not overlap with the functions of the existing agencies which are part of the creative industries. And we also would like to um, appeal to our um, uh, to the Senate, to Senator Amy Marcos and those who are going to um, uh, finalize this bill to please include um, uh, the, the different agencies involved in their respective sectors. For example, the performing arts sector like music, theater, and dance shall be represented by Cultural Center of the Philippines. Audiovisual industry and new media um, shall be represented by the Film Development Council of the Philippines. The sector on publishing, printing, and literature like books, newspapers, magazines, periodicals, ebooks, and other printed and electronic materials can be represented by the National Book Development Board. His heritage and cultural sites like archaeology archaeological and historical sites museums libraries and archival sites and exhibitions shall be represented by the national historical commission and national museum this so, thank you for that uh, manifestation uh, mr marasigan actually pwede na yung iba mong ideas pwede nang gawing bill separate you teach creatives industry if pwede na nating gawang bill yet separate <laughs> at saka Yung, yung council uh, to review and propose uh, bills on the creative industry we, we, we can we can write that now but of course you, you feel free to approach your legislators <laughs> dito naman din kami sino pa po who else wants to uh, say something how about the DTI design center you were here first ma'am eh? si ma'am Ria yes yeah. Yeah, you're one of the earliest. So you you want to say something as well? Yes, yes, Chair. Um, actually, since we're part of DTI, so we've already been coordinating with USEC FITA and um the other private sector members of the creative industry in the um, in our in crafting our position for um for the creative industries and the and the bill, no. But um specific to the Science Center of the Philippines, um, and on top of what was reported by. Um, you said FITA. The Design Center of the Philippines is actually in partnership with the British Council of the Philippines for um, to do a scoping, um, to do a mapping of the Philippine design sector, the design innovation ecosystem, to understand um, the the value chain as well as to understand the the bigger ecosystem of the um, of the design sectors in the Philippines, not just within the design industry but in a bigger design economy, meaning designers that may be in a non-design in this, working in a non-design industry. And um, we hope to be able to, one, primarily um, have a real, um, a, um, a more, a standardized definition of, of design in the country, as well as the identification of um, the um, standard industry um, codes, um, again, to help the, the mapping as well as to help in the um, statistical gathering of the design sector, as well as the occupational um, classification of the um, of the design industries, as well as the, the larger design economy. Um, this is all in aid of the creation of the first national design policy of the country. Um, again, it's, it's in aid of the um, 
the the goals of um, RA10557, which is the Philippine Design Competitiveness Act of 2013, which it, which sees the, um, the which has an ambition of to, to promote an economy and society driven by design and creativity, responsive to our fast changing times, and reflective of the Filipino culture and identity. To enhance the competitiveness and innovation of Philippine products, create market responsive design services when advocating for economic and environmental sustainability, and to advocate the protection of intellectual property rights to these ideas and innovations. So all um, the, the mapping is that one of the, the, the critical steps we see in being able to fulfill um, the, the mandate as well as the goals um, provided by RA10557. And we hope to finalize the mapping as well as the, the first um, national design policy um, uh, this year, um, 2021. Actually, we wanted to do it in 2020, but the 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 work plan then is to do it um, a physical um, mapping. So now we um, we had to recast the the um, the methodology primarily to do the these surveys as well as um, statistical gathering online and um, together with with DTI, the work um, that is being done with PIDS, we are also working with the Philippine Statistical Authority on this um, with the hope of being able to create um, a creative industries account um, within the PSA to regularly monitor um, the, the improvement as well as the growth of the um, creative industries and also the, the design um, industries of the country. What is the specific uh, task or role of your agency, ma'am? Well, um, um, what we since we were created in 1973, it was really to aid um, in the development of um, new uh, a new generation of entrepreneurs that is a non traditional um, enterprise. So primarily, our um, um, role ng um, design center is for product development um, to help in the export of goods. That's why we're, we also belong to the trade promotions group of um, the Department of, of Trade and Industry. But um, as, um, as outlined in the RA10557, the role of design is actually um, now um, going beyond the traditional um, definition of design, which is primarily in object making but it's also um, a driver for innovation. So um, it's also um, more service oriented rather than just plain, um, again, object making or manufacturing of, of goods. So that is basically the, the, um, the transitioning of, of the agency to embrace also the other, um, the, the other um, not domains, but the other sectors of design and primarily also um, to address, um, um, well, our, our ambition is also to contribute to, uh, to contribute to have design solutions um, for stickier problems, um, such as, uh, you know, like what we're going through like, in terms of sustainability as well as the, um, the environment. Mr. Chair, if primarily I it's for, so, sorry, but primarily it's really to, to drive um, uh, competitiveness. Um, MSME competitiveness. Thank you, Ma Senator Marcos. Yes, if I may uh, uh, just add, uh, Design Center became the R&D basically of SITEM during the heydays of our export promotions effort. Yes. So, parang uh, sila yung nag, uh, nag -re research ng mga Filipino design, tapos they embarked on industrial packaging, which in the 70s didn't exist, and uh, they helped in the exploration of bamboo and uh, other fibers and its use in design and actual product development. So, uh, the uh, chairman very perceptive actually uh, observes that uh, perhaps it's time to reevaluate given the uh, uh, the uh, uh, diminishing role of exports in uh, SITEM as well as in DTI. Baka kailangan talaga tignan din yan uh, at ma-overhaul. Uh, Mr. Chair, if I may ask, nung uh, nakaraang hearing po natin, uh, naalala ko, natigil tayo dun sa IPO. 
yung sa copyright uh, infringement and how this will uh, impact on the present uh, copyright laws. Uh, it's been a uh, very uh, difficult crusade in the Philippines, um, where, as they say, copyright means the right to copy. So, kinakailangan siguro, kausapin natin yung mga in charge dyan sa IPO, uh, given the difficulties of monitoring digital content, and now the uh, new or perhaps very, very old problem of the misappropriation of cultural assets um, for our indigenous people who have been exploited in many, many ways. And finally, I'd like to give a uh, small uh, 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 leg up to our music industry, which has been the first and last victim of this issue of copyright. Siguro may IPO dyan, baka pwede tayong tulungan. Is IPO, IPO feel present? Ah, uh, here, sino, can I have, have your name, sir? M M Emerson, sir. M Emerson, yes. Mr. Chair, yes. Emerson Cuyo, yes, sir. Sige, can you react, please? Uh, there is a separate uh, recommendation. Uh, first, sir, on the amendment of the IP code. Uh, the uh, present IP code was passed in 1998. So it's been several years uh, since uh, the law uh, was passed. So there is a need to uh, amend the law in order to uh, update it to the uh, developments of the time. So meron na po, sa lower house po, there is already a bill uh, uh, discussing uh, amendments on the IP code. So, pwede po siguro doon. As to the uh, question of uh, Senator Amy Marcos on what can we do for our, our indigenous peoples, as we have manifested in the previous uh, uh, meeting of a different committee, uh, so he got cut off now. So, uh, so the mark, he got cut off. So oh, no, hey. yeah, maybe we can ask them uh, how they can it's, help it's, us. Because medyo bloody ang copyright dito sa atin eh. Oh, but but don't forget, uh, even if you have made a manifestation this hearing, please uh, f uh, uh give, Mr. Give Chair. A, Give us still uh, written inputs or uh, position paper. Tutu na tanggal na naman si Emerson. So who's who's seeking who's seeking uh, recognition? Uh, Sandali, Mama. Uh, Attorney Ponsalan. Uh, yes. Thank you. Yes. Ah. Uh, uh, yes. Oh, si, si, Emer teka, si Emerson nga si. Uh, em Emerson. Emerson, your your signal is uh, very erratic, so we will recognize first uh, Attorney Punsalan, the Corporate Secretary of Asosasyon ng Musikong Pilipino. Sige ma'am, go ahead. Yes, maraming salamat Mr. Chair. I would like to thank um, Senator Pimentel and Senator Marcos for mentioning both the SB 411 together with the Philippine Bamboo Industry Development Act of 2019 because I am the World Bamboo Ambassador to the United Nations Global Compact, which is actually the largest sustainability initiative of the United Nations. And many of our resource speakers here and advocates are in the creative industry are part of that. Now, I would like to support what Attorney Emerson Puyo has mentioned. And I would like to direct our attention also to the existing National Intellectual Property Strategy or NITS project which is already launched, which was launched May 30 of 2017 by the IPO together with the World Intellectual Property Organization. And many of the creative industry stakeholders participated in several uh, deliberations for this. And uh, the National Intellectual Property Strategy is aligned with the uh, Ambition 2040. And uh, this is the five-year framework of the NITS is all from 2025, sorry, 2020 
to 2025. Now, since Attorney Cuyo uh, is here, he may be able to um, evaluate or elaborate further on the NIPS. Now, going back to uh, the draft substitute bill uh, in the House of Representatives, which uh, Mr. Paolo Mercado mentioned, this can be harmonized with, I believe, the SB 411. I fully support um, Senator Marcos's suggestion and also Senator Pimentel's um, recommendation to keep um, the number of um, members of the CIDC to be essential. Because other um, resource speakers and other members may be taken in later on. On the comments for uh, the wider scope of the powers and functions of the CIDC, I would like to manifest uh, the adoption of this, the following. In terms of uh, infrastructure support, uh, the Creative Industries Development Plan for the short, medium, and long term, which includes digitalization, tax incentives, especially for creative enterprises, and importantly, access to credit financing as well as capacity building, instruction, and education. I would also like to point out in the section regarding the budget allocation or appropriation. Our Senate Bill 411 proposes an allocation of 500 million pesos while its counterpart bill in the House of Representative Draft Substitute Bill proposes an allocation of 5 billion pesos. And the HREP Draft Substitute Bill and the Senate Bill 411 are similar in purpose. However, the Draft Substitute Bill in the Congress has additional sectoral representation and delineation of duties and has a wider scope, specific project timetables, uh, Mr. Chair. Um, AMP, or the Association of uh, Musicum Filipino, we will be submitting our official position paper. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Thank you, ma'am. I will, I will uh, recognize the others, but let me first recognize uh, our DOST uh, representative. Uh... Uh, good afternoon. Uh, good morning, Mr. Chair. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, Julius po. Uh, good, good morning, Mr. Chair, and good morning, Apo Aimi. Uh, this is from the Department of Science and Technology. Po. Uh, we would just like to uh, also uh, thread along that line about research and development. So maybe in part or in full, uh, we, uh, we could uh, this could be considered. And I'll just read it from our uh, part of our uh, position paper that to promote and support the continuous innovation of the creative industry. Uh, part of the support that could be identified in the bill, probably in Section 6, will may merit a, or may merit a separate clause on research, development, and innovation. It will put emphasis and vague basis on the allocation of resources for projects in support of the industry and for the central direction and synchronization and harmonization of government's effort in research, development, and innovation. So it might, uh, it could probably, it could, we could probably consider uh, uh, probably uh, including research, development, and innovation support that the central direction, leadership, and coordination of R&D and innovation in support of the creative industries uh, shall be as mandated by our own mandate as DOST, be with the DOST in the development of the enabling products, technologies, and systems for the expression of or as tools for the expression of creative work shall be qualified under the framework of the creative industries R&D and innovation program. That's the first part. Po. The second one is I also uh, we also are in uh, support the creative uh, instruction and education. We know that this mandate is not, is lodged uh, actually with the Ed, uh, Ched, and maybe Tesda. But uh, for the consideration of Apo Aimi, uh, the DOS steering is also uh, rolling out uh, products of our technologies and innovations to the different uh, communities. For example, uh, handloom weavers, uh, even to our uh, animators, etc. So this type of technology transfer mechanism is also part of the reinforcement as far as uh, instruction.
and education of the creative sector. And uh, that's th those are the two uh, main uh, positions, uh, Mr. Chair. And the last one is we also support the, uh, the consideration of possible amendments to the IP code with respect to uh, the uh, interpretation and uh, appropriation of uh, uh, copyrighted designs. Uh, we have also lengthily discussed this in a different in, in Senator Ligardas webinar sometime last week. Uh, uh, there really is a problem with uh, with respect to the premise and framework of the copyright law uh, that that might uh, not uh, actually uh, you know uh, protect the cultural work. At the same time, it might also be too restrictive or too open uh, or permissive for or in stifling the man uh, the creative uh, industry as a whole. So uh, with those two, um, Mr. Chair, we will also be passing and submitting the written. Uh, manifestation from the DOST. Salamat po. Yes, we welcome uh, Chief Lianyo, the written uh, position paper. But sabi mo, please elaborate on the yung restrictive, how, how the uh, costs uh, are yeah. beca beca became uh, restrictive of, of creative. <laughs> Uh, hindi naman po. We are looking at it from the vantage point po kasi from, we are, I am particularly from the Philippine Textile Research Institute. So we are doing also a lot of innovation work uh, as we as we know, as we move along. So yung IP code po, for example, if our in-house weaver or our in-house uh, textile designer develops something, definitely the copyright law would be able to protect that. Ang problema is how do you now associate or protect naman yung inspiration niya, pinagalingan niya. And we know, we know these are all from cultural, diba? From cultural origin. At the same time po, if we, we are into, you know, pag nagbinaliktad naman po natin, for example, and uh, uh, maging mag-appropriate naman tayo on the cultural origin, it might also stifle yung ating po creative creative industry. For example, the, the others who would want to venture into using or in being inspired, for example, of these creative uh, iconographies or patterns or designs. So yung, yun lang po, uh, on that part, it's a very practical uh, experience on our end, uh, which we also uh, have manifested with the uh, IPO field regarding for that part. Thank you. Please add the discussion on, uh, on that in your position paper. Yes, yes, um, yes, sir, yes, yes. Yes, Senator Amy. Yes. yes, there have been requests um, uh, on several occasions regarding uh, sui generis copyright. Uh, we need a uh, different premise, for example, for the uh, IP communities who actually, firstly, ang problema, di ba yung copyright is uh, specific to a certain individual. In many, many cases, these cultural assets belong to the entire ethnic community. So, paano i-register -re ron? Wala naman nagmemeare kasi it's come down through the ages and it belongs to the entire tribe, as it were. Ikalawa, yung problema ng timeline. Kasi may limitasyon yung ating IPO na hanggang 20, 25 years lang yan. Samantalang alam natin na in perpetuity dapat pag-aari ng tribu yan. So, dapat ganon. On the other hand, restrictive naman kasi maganda naman na certain motifs really uh, go from being merely tribal, ethnic, indigenous towards the mainstream. Halimbawa sa Mindanao, yung sari manok, hindi na yan pag-aari ng miskisino kasi tinuturing na natin yan bahagi ng ating heritage. So yung sari manok, siguro kailangan mag-bolt in na dyan yung NCCA at yung Design Center, tulungan yung IP. Paano nga ba i-re-register yung mga katulad nun without uh, restricting or stifling uh, creative uh, um, juices at the same time making certain that the commercialization will also be viable. So, may mga issues na ganun sa cultural heritage ng uh, indigenous people. I think um, digital and particularly music has its own uh, set of uh, problems as well with IP. So, thank you. At Attorney Kuyo is uh, already online of IPO field. So, sir, we will we allow you to continue. Go ahead, sir. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, to continue on the issue of uh, protecting our uh, indigenous peoples and uh, as regards their intellectual property or what we call as traditional uh, property rights, uh, we have uh, expressed uh, our observation that in fact there are gaps in the present or existing IP system particularly with its emphasis on the exclusivity of intellectual property rights. 
So our recommendation, uh, Mr. Chair, has been to draft uh, or devise a sui generis uh, law or protection uh, for our uh, indigenous peoples. Uh, Alpofil is willing to assist in the formulation of a proposed bill uh, in this particular regards. Uh, I, I note lang po that uh, yung question po uh, on what if it's inspired. Actually, under the present copyright law, it covers protection for contemporary uh, contemporary treatment of indigenous uh, uh, cultural expressions, yung traditional cultural expressions. Uh, but we need, again, because it's uh, supposed, the inspiration is supposed to be a property of the community, we need to have uh, the free and prior informed consent of these communities prior, prior to registering them as, uh, uh, as the intellectual property or the copyrights of a particular individual. And if I may, Mr. Chair, uh, since I already have the floor, can, can we also uh, express our comments on Senate Bill 411? Okay, uh, the IPOFIL in principle expresses support to Senate Bill 411, uh, the creation of a creative development, a creative industries development council that shall formulate and implement the development and promotion of Filipino content and the protection and commercialization of Filipino intellectual property is very much welcome and will complement the development functions of the IPOFIL. Indeed, the more laborers there are in the vineyard of intellectual property, the more fruits can be harvested from the system that would benefit not only the creative sector, but also the economic well-being of the country as a whole. Uh, in this regard, we actually have some preliminary observations on the bill. The IPOFIL knows notices in particular that there are uh, matters therein that will directly or indirectly interface with the mandate and functions of the IPOFIL under the IP code, such as, for example, Section 5D and I on enforcement, Section 7 on additional creative content rights, and Section 5H and Section 10 on registration of rights. I fulfill respect police clarification on this, particularly as to the scope, nature, and the uh, proposed implementation thereof. There is a need to determine uh, if there is or would be overlaps with the functions of the IPOFIL. I fulfill also respectfully suggest that the body also takes a look at the WIPO methodology on top of the mentioned UNCTAD and UNESCO methodologies, which is uh, WIPO has made great strides in advancing studies on the economic contribution of the creative industries to national economies. Uh, take note that comparab comparability of the data across countries and jurisdictions is an important aspect moving forward. Uh, we also note that there was a mention earlier by Senator Amy Marcos of the commercial or business focus of the bill. As such, intellectual property is central and core to the creative industries. Uh, thus, IPOFIL respectfully suggests that the committee consider the inclusion of the intellectual property office in the list of government agencies that have to be consulted in the formulation and implementation of a national creative economy development plan under Section 5A. The IPOFIL also requests that it be given opportunity to submit further comments, a formal position paper, and inputs on the bill. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Of course, the inputs from the IPOFIL uh, are most welcome. Please uh, discuss the overlap and how to avoid it. Pwede, Marson, the possible overlap. Because we want to avoid that, diba? We want to avoid that? Yes, sir. Marson, yeah, we want to avoid that. Okay, that's what my impression also. Okay, so thank you. Uh, so, okay, we'll go uh, go down the list here. Uh, 
Uh, the Department of Tourism. Sino ba ito? Sandali, ha? Mm. Yes, Mr. Bengson. Here, Department of Tourism. Uh, is he here? Good evening, Mr. Chair. This is Kay Malilong Isberto of Nayong Filipino Foundation, the attached agency of the Department of Tourism. Uh, I was requested to attend on behalf of the DOT. Um, okay. So we, we welcome the creation of the council. It's about time that the business aspect of the creative and cultural industries uh, gets emphasized. So over the years, there have been many programs um, in NCCA, for example, that sought to give protection. But as management changed, these were not implemented. Uh, in other countries, this kind of office would be uh, lodged with its Ministry of Culture, um, um, specific to the protection of um, intellectual property. Um, uh, we appreciate the fact that Section 11 of the bill recognizes that many agencies are already involved um, doing bits and pieces of these things. And um, it's true that the need to check which um, mandates overlap need to be done. So at Nayong Filipino Foundation, one of the mandates is actually research on uh, social sciences and the humanities. And we have uh, shifted our focus on studying the ecosystem of the creative and cultural industries and then apply that to the design of the park that we are currently building uh, in Paranaque. We are in talks with the uh, FDCP as well as the NGO for um, Creative Content, uh, CCAP, to help us create programs that would lead to high-value jobs and uh, be a platform for showcasing the work of Filipino creatives and at the same time, celebrate Filipino heritage. So um, we understand that uh, creating a new government agency might take time, that organizing an office to do a plan might take years, even if this bill gets passed. So we would suggest that um, in the meantime, uh, Nayo Filipino in convergence with other cultural agencies uh, have programs where we can build immediately a creative hub uh, to service the needs of uh, cultural and creative industry um, stakeholders. So we will also be submitting a more detailed uh, position paper as well as description of descriptions of the programs that we intend to implement uh, in the next three years uh, with the uh, groups that we mentioned. Thank you, Lucille. So let's go to uh, fashion and then uh, games, no? So game, game so, so fashion is... Ah, yes, Ms. Santa Marcos. Very sorry. Yeah, I just wanted to uh, react, not necessarily to uh, to uh, Nayan Filipino or Lucille, but more importantly to you, Sak Aldaba kanina, na binanggit kanina niya yung uh, tourism and sports. I'm a little anxious about uh, this overreach. Um, I think we may possibly be encroaching on everyone and everything and not getting anything done for those who need help. Um, kinatatakutan ko dyan yung tourism kasi syempre wala namang papel sa hotel, restaurant, tourist guide. Siguro uh, yung cultural products na lang ng tourism, pwedeng, uh, pwedeng tignan. At the same time, yung sports, wag na natin isama. Ang dai-dai na nga nito, nahihirapan na tayo ng uh, yun sa nine domains times 11 sectors kada isa. Medyo may untad na, may waipo pa, may kung ano-ano. Uh, suggest ko lang, naro, naro muna kasi yung DTI ay... Uh, uh, sinakop na yung tourism and sports. Medyo kabado lang ako, baka hindi natin kayanin. And all the National Live Events Coalition also mentioned that. Eh, yung sports, recreation, exhibition. So. Anyway, please submit your position papers para ano po namin talaga mapag-aralan din po namin. Okay, so we'll now recognize Ma'am Palaganas of the... Anong group mo, ma'am? The Fashion... Philippine Fashion Coalition. Uh, yes, go ahead, go ahead. Okay. Um, good morning, Mr. Chair and um, Senator Marcos. Uh, I'm Esma Palagana of the Philippine Fashion Coalition and actually would like to recognize also the board members of uh, their part in the room right now, Jackie Aquino, Therese Evangelista Cruz, Corbina Sanchez Jacob, Junior P, and Uh So the Philippine Fashion Coalition is the national, the first 
National Business Support Organization of the Filipino fashion industry. AFC reiterates our appreciation for the opportunity to provide inputs on this matter as we've already sent our position paper and comments to the concept. Yeah, we've been working closely um, for the past few months during the pandemic. Um, PFC was formed during the pandemic um, with the PTRI, DOST, BPI, DOI, CITM, DCP, and NCCO um, on policy development to help the fashion industry. So again, PFC um, has already sent our um, position paper for this. Um, the Philippine Fashion Coalition recognizes that representation in the CID's council should also include voices from the grassroots level. Fashion at the superficial level might seem to be just design, but on a deeper level, we are working with textile mills that directly work with farmers and the agricultural sector. The, co the coalition also supports the indigenous groups in the Philippines who bring so much back to the Filipino culture and whose traditional indigenous textiles have been lately vulnerable, vulnerable to copying. Aside from design, we also cover other fashion industries such as fashion events, the creative sector, textile weaving and manufacturing, models as well, cultural communities in relation to textile, modeling agencies, and design-driven manufacturing. We are doomed as a sunset industry, but with the current changes in the global consumption and global fashion sustainable movement, sustainable movement um, sustainability is actually a rising movement that the Philippine fashion industry can take part of. We hope that the industries like ours, with ties with local communities nationwide, that has proven to have good opportunities to be commercially viable and support existing industries, such as audiovisual industries, be heard in the creation of this concept. Um, so the three art forms that have always defined civilization as the architecture, visual arts, and costume. And we're so grateful to be, to be heard in this um, room and creating stuff. Rest assured that we will continue to support the endeavors of the Honorable Senate and will continue to participate in this process. We will likewise submit additional inputs as and when necessary and or when required. We hope that the inputs that we have just submitted will be given due consideration for the benefit of all stakeholders and of the Philippine fashion industry as a whole. That will be it for the Philippine Fashion, fashion Coalition. And again, thank you so much for um, inviting us um, into this room. Thank you for, for the inputs, ma'am. Uh, let's go to the Games Developer Association of the Philippines. Mr. Chair, I'd just like to observe. Uh, yes. Yeah, i just like to observe following Ms. Palagana's presentation that, in fact, fashion has been uh, a uh, primary driver of the so-called orange economies or the creative industries in Latin America. Uh, nagkaroon sila ng Manny Pacquiao, ng mga designer na pumatok sa Hollywood and it basically uh, changed the game entirely for the creative industries in uh, Latin America. Kaya, kaya natin lumaban dun sa, sa field na yan, di ba ma'am? Uh, kaya natin. Uh, okay, so kahit sa games din, ito rin sa games. At uh, si Mr. Yes, Hulag. Sir. <laughs> yes sir, uh, good morning. So after hearing everyone, uh, especially Senator Aimee, uh, we don't want to waste any more time uh, as through Senator Aimee's experience uh, you know, lots of efforts have been done but you know nothing happened even with giving everyone equal representation at this current point in time in the pandemic you have to look back at what actually survived during this pandemic and this is what can carry our country forward and the only in real industry that survived was the people in digital so in discussions like leadership or uh, or uh, placing importance on incentives, I think it will benefit us greatly if we all have to agree that any leader, any incentive at this point in time should be centered on people who are digital, industries who are already digital. Yan, I mean, I, I, I'm not, I'm very Filipino. I promote, I've been promoting the country all my life. But if our efforts will have a chance of succeeding. We have to move on something which is winnable. And there's nothing else right now but digital. So to have a non-IT uh, person or group uh, to lead this effort, I think that this was, they would just go down as with the other efforts beforehand. I hope I did not insult anyone here. I just want to be practical. 
Okay, let's win a winnable battle. Let's stay digital. That's it. Thank you. But your your sector, sir, can probably be uh, promoted and or protected by different uh, industry councils, diva. Right? If you yes, yes. if you if you belong to the creatives industry and they they want you they want you to count you as one of them, welcome you na. And then I'm sure you also have another field the way which will be promoting you, the high tech uh, sector, the science sector. Uh, I have no problem with that. But our problem, as earlier stated by Senator Aini, is just we're trying to recognize everyone. And we can't. We, we can't. Eh? We can't. So I just, I just think we have to, when we make our decision on how this bill should be ratified and approved, that being digital, or already having a previous history on doing activities which are digital, should weigh the heaviest. Having yes. leaders who have done something digital before, because this will be this will benefit everyone everyone who, who we can invest in yeah but okay but, sige, sir. But, the, but the creatives industry uh welcomes you and bagsak yata kayo rin sa animation and game development eh. D- don kayo, di ba? Okay. and then there will, be, there will be some other industry groupings which will which will welcome you Sigurado ako dun, because you are you are that important and the future, uh, you represent also the future. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you. Ano, Alvin, ano bang games na pwede natin ipagmayabang na na gawang Pilipino? <laughs> uh, wala, wala pa at, at this moment, but uh, pur- marami kasi sa atin yung malalaki, yung mga service, nasa service industry din kami. So, you know, there's a, a quite a few companies here that have done work for PlayStation and ako naman sa Xbox. And those are big huge multi-billion dollar games. So yun usually ang pinagmamayabang namin when we're trying to promote the country. But as a original Filipino creation, mm. the game, um, wala pa naman siguro wala pa. Uh, So, but it's, it's coming, sir. It's coming. Major, we are unified in that aspect. It's our common dream. Thank you, thank you. Okay, so... Uh, yeah, yeah, actually, uh, sa totoo lang, uh, Chairman Coco, kung minsan napakahaba, very long tail kasi ang animation and games, kaya nag invest yung iba't ibang South East Asian countries, except the Philippines, kaya kung ano-ano na na-develop sa uh, Thailand at Malaysia na kung tutuusin, pati Vietnam, mas may talent naman ata tayo. Yun nga lang, buhos talaga, tinutodo talaga ng gobyerno ang tulong sa kanila. Samantalang dito, si Alvin, pareho ko, alam kung mag ano yung taxes, yung excise, yung taripa na ini-impose sa Xbox. Halimbawa, patay kang bata dyan pag nagpasok ka. Pag inismagal mo, mas lalo kang huling-huli. Kaya yan yung mga issue namin, pati yung mga camera, yung mga software, pati yung mga heavy duty at malalaking computer. Ang mamahal po rito, minsan six times the price elsewhere. Exactly. <laughs> Thank you, ma'am. So thank you, thank you. At least may may natututunan na kami sa inyo. Okay, so Paul, Paul Mr. Paul uh, Morales of Artist Welfare. Okay, sige, uh, go ahead, sir. Magandang umaga po sa lahat. Senator Pimentel, tatanong ko lang po, meron po ba kayong uh, Committee on Culture? Yes. Sa, sa, uh, meron din yes, po. Yes, 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 we have, we have. Opo. Uh, uh, Anyway, para po sa artist welfare at para sa mga artista, ako po ay nagkatrabaho sa performing arts industry. So uh, siguro maaari din ako magsalita ng kaunti para sa amin. Uh, sa, ang observasyon ko lang is uh, we're all very supportive at very excited for this creation of this uh, Creative Industries Act and uh, these uh, initiatives. Uh, ang Nagsubmit na rin po kami ng aming position paper. Ang nais lang namin ipaalaala is sana'y mabigyan pa natin ng halaga yung kultura nga. Kasi sinasabi natin lagi na culturally and economically. Uh, pero kung makikita natin, ang karamihan ng framework ay nandoon pa rin sa uh, punto ng ekonomiya. Natama rin naman kasi ito nga po yung bagong uh, ekonomiya ng mundo. No? Information and creativity is the new uh, new industri- industrial revolution. Papunta na po tayo sa creativity and uh, information. Kung papansin po natin, 
Uh, lahat ng mga sinasabi natin, mga bayan, Thailand, Malaysia, Indonesia, uh, Singapore, at, at lahat ng to. Katulad ng minention ni Attorney Kay kanina, meron po silang malakas na Department of Culture. At kaya natutuwa po kami doon sa Section 5 na may nakalagay na kailangan natin mag-reorganize ng ating cultural agencies. Uh, hindi po natin sinasabing masama yung ating mga cultural agencies, pero alam po natin lahat na may mga pagkukulang ito uh, sa mga batas, sa uh, overlapping ng kanilang responsibilidad, sa kakulangan uh, ng uh, agency uh, para magsalita para sa kultura. Uh, so, dun po sa aming proposal, sana maglagay lang tayo ng caveat na nakarugtong ito. Sa aming experience, for example, sa Singapore, at uh, also implied in the uh, well worded uh, bill by Senator Marcos na ang implementation ng ganitong batas ay dadaan din sa mga ahensya natin sa kultura. Kaya babalik pa rin tayo sa uh, ideya na hindi lang kailangan natin ng economic plan, na kailangan din tayo ng isang planong pangkultura. Ano ba yung mahalaga para sa ating mga Pilipino? Ano yung nais nating uh, pagyamanin? Hindi lang natin nais pagyamanin yung ating uh, bulsa Pero yung puso din natin, yung ating kaluluwa, yung ating pagka-Pilipino. Uh, so yun lang po. At uh, katulad po doon sa House uh, Bill Sessions, napakalaki po ng participation, napaka-interesado ng mga tao, uh, napakalaki ng mga sektor. Kung isipin natin yung performing arts, napakalaking sektor din. At katulad ng sabi ni, na mula sa gaming industry, kahit ang performing arts natin ngayon ay napupunta na rin sa digital uh, tumatawid na lahat. Uh, gumagawa lang mga paraan para makapag-present ng uh, bagong paraan. For example, yung CCP Dance Company, ang nag-present sila ng drive-in movie. So, ginawa nilang pelikula yung kanilang sayaw sa Shumart. Uh, inibita nila yung mga tao. So, ibig sabihin, nag-iiba na siya. Nagkakaroon ng uh, bagong paraan. So, yun lang po. Uh, sabi din namin sa aming manif manifestation paper, uh, napakalaga ng ideya ng uh, ano ba yung pagka-Pilipino, yung ating identity. So sana kahit sa maliit na paraan ay mapigyan ng sistema ito. At sana din ma-share sa amin uh, ng ating mga mambabatas kung ano pa yung maaari nating gawin. Uh, kasama din kami dun sa nag-advocate for Department of Culture na alam natin ay nasa National Economic Development Plan. In fact, uh, isa po siyang uh, priority legislation na uh, nakasaad doon. So hinahanap pa rin po namin yun, pero kung meron po tayong ibang mga uh, solusyon para dito, maaari din naman natin isipin. Ngayon pa man, we really uh, support the idea of the Creative Industries Act and Bill kasi nga uh, napakalaga nito. Pero yun lang nga po, uh, sana'y maalala natin na uh, kultura din po natin yung ating uh, pinapagalaw dito at pwede natin pagyaman. Salamat po. Thank you for that, sir. Uh, Mr. Del Rosario, you, 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 you want to be recognized, sir, for your with the Animation Council of the Philippines? Yes, sir. Good morning, uh, Chair Coco uh, and Senator Aimee and uh, the rest of the, the group. Um, yes, I just want to make a manifestation on behalf of the Animation Council of the Philippines. No? So Animation Council of the Philippines, or ACPI, supports Bill. Uh, as Senate Bill 411, we hope that the bill will serve as a catalyst for the animation industry's growth in terms of commercialization and lucrative consumption of IP content and animation services here and abroad. API represents a 40-year effort of animation services worldwide, a source of creative content generation and other associated production in 2D, 3D, visual effects and the like. Our current pool of about 10,000 full-time artists and a growing freelancer thrives on these animation services. Uh, the local animation industry has proven to be pandemic proof and we hope we can be given exposure and funding to further expand its value proposition, its value chain and expansion of its local creative ecosystem. We see the growth of independent creative entrepreneurs in the animation and game industry the needed creator uh, of IP protection and rights and constant rapport of the private sector, such as our own, promoting animation content and services. 
We believe the future of monetization of creative outputs, whether it be original content generation or global animation services for commercialization again, increases our gains in commerce and trade in the global arena. Yun lang po, Mr. Chair. Maraming maraming salamat po. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Pakimute mo na yung naka, ano, okay. Thank you, Mr. Del Rosario. Ah. You, you, you said pandemic proof, ah. talaga. Ah. Talagang. Anong, what, what, are, what are our what are our figures? Anong anong? Hindi uh, naman sa pagbayabang ano, sir. Natanong niya. Um, because I myself has uh, I I run a studio myself, no, uh, called Toon City, and uh, we got hit uh, during the at the beginning of the pandemic. Um, in parenthesis, 2009 was our best year. Pandemic came and we were hit by about 30% boom of buying business, primarily because of bandwidth concerns and your work from home disruption. Uh, I'm, I'm proud to say that in 2021, I think we will beat uh, our 2019 records, if not equal that. So all that to say, all that to say the potential is there and uh, and the animation industry worldwide is really grappling with talents. And the Philippines, proven, you know, sa akin hulang uh, uh, experience myself, 65% of our workforce are not four-year graduates. In other words, inherent ho talaga sa Pilipino ang creative talent. So yan, countryside development, easy. Uh, kasi proven eh. Uh, Bacolod, uh, Camarines Sur, uh, uh, Cavite, uh, all the way up to Northern Luzon, yung mga talents ho namin, hindi ho four-year course graduates. Meanwhile, we are serving, uh, you know, the business of these worlds, uh, France and, and what have you. Uh, so yeah, proven, pandemic proof ho, uh, Senator. So we wish you all the best, sir. Huh? Uh, Maraming salamat po and we look forward thank to Thank you, this. thank you for the inputs. Uh, we now listen to the Philippine Motion Picture Producers Association. Uh, legal counsel is here, uh, Attorney Kat Maniego. And then, uh, DepEd, DepEd, please prepare if you want if you want to also uh, say something. Uh, DepEd, DepEd is next. So, yes, uh, Attorney Maniego. Uh, hello, good morning, po, uh, Senator Pimental and Senator Marcos, and everyone in the room on behalf of the PMPPA. Uh, we just like to express our support for uh, this bill. Um, we uh, welcome any um, de uh, developmental efforts for the Philippine, uh, for the creative industries of the Philippines. Uh, most, uh, we will be uh, submitting our position paper uh, on the bill, but I think mo more of our uh, questions, I think, uh, and that we see clarification on mostly matters regarding uh, representation and mostly how um, the council that will be established through this bill will operate and how it will seek to actively uh, protect the interests of all the industries uh, that are mentioned under the bill. Um, uh, we note uh, certain concerns such as, um, I, it was actually discussed earlier on the rationale behind the four um, independent uh, council members plus the chairman but we were just wanting to um ask um how the 11 industries will be fairly represented from the four um who will be selected to be part of the council um next uh we would like to see clarification if the council will be um, purely developmental or will there be a uh, regulatory um um kind of powers attached to them and uh, we'd also like to also be able to participate um, in suggesting programs um, um, relative to our um, own industries, uh, which is mostly the, the film industry, the film and television industry by association. And then um, our last concern is mostly, um, there was uh, one of the sections in the bill uh, pertains to uh, reorganization of existing government agencies and so we would actually just like uh, we're expressing our interest in how that um, will be done um, all other opinions uh, will be expressed in our position paper but that will be 
uh, mostly it from the PMPBA. Uh, we would very much like to um, thank uh, the senators, uh, Senator Marcos and Senator Pimentel for uh, giving us the opportunity to express our support for this bill. Thank you very much. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Is DepEd still around? DepEd? Kasi meron silang manifestation sa chat room eh. So anyway. Morning, Mr. Chair. Yes, yeah, so who is this, please? Mr. I'm, Sullivan? Mr. Sullivan? I'm Samuel uh, Sullivan, uh, Mr. Chair. Go ahead. Um, I am joined by uh, uh, Miss Eileen Supnad and uh, uh, Miss uh, Christine uh, Magboo. Um, Mr. Chair, we, we like to extend our uh, appreciation and uh, support uh, to this uh, Senate bill uh, that promotes uh, creative industries. Uh, we say so because um, in our K-12 uh, curriculum, uh, we also uh, include uh, uh, learning competencies and curriculum standards are relevant to creative industries uh, that are captured in our programs like uh, our special programs in the arts, special uh, programs in uh, journalism, even in our uh, technical vocational uh, education like uh, home economics, uh, industrial arts, uh, ICT as well, uh, wherein uh, we also promote uh, entrepreneurship. So, um, uh in our senior high school uh, mr chair we also have our uh, arts and design uh, and then uh, our science technology uh, engineering uh, and uh, uh, mathematics uh, uh yes uh, mr chair uh, we will uh, submit our official uh, position uh, paper uh, and uh, we also uh, appeal that uh, the Department of Education be uh, considered in the Creative Industries Council. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. Sullivan. <laughs> good points, huh? good points. Yeah. So, tinuturo, tinuturo pala extensively na rin sa K-12. Mr. Sullivan, uh, subjects which uh, which uh, yes, yes. develop, which yes. develop creativity. Yes. Important. Yes, yes, uh, Mr. Chair. O oh, sige, ayusin natin kasi nalala ko, Amy, Senator Amy, yung speech ni Senator Ruin Gatsalian. <laughs> Problema pa. So ayusin natin yung curriculum natin din. Sige. Okay, so sino pa? Who else wants to... Uh, express their position or opinion. Barbie Atienza? Okay, Barbie, you're still here? Of uh, United Print Multimedia Group, UPMG. Is, is Mr. Barbie Atienza still here? Ah, so they're having some technical glitches. Pala. Okay, so they will just submit their position paper. So anybody else? Um, sir, Chair, if I may be recognized, please. Oh, yes. Uh, 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 this is... Yes, uh, CCAP President, Mr. Magu Del Mundo. What is CCAP, yes. sir? Magu, uh, Magu, sir what? Um, yes, sir. Of CCAP, we're the Creative Content Creators uh, Association of the Philippines. I know it's a mouthful. That's why we just opt to go by CCAP. Na lang po. Um, go ahead, go ahead. Thank you, sir. First and foremost, we thank you, Sir Chair and uh, Senator Marcos, for this uh, opportunity to be part of this historic uh, moment in the Philippines, especially in the area of the creative industries. And we would like to express our full support with um, with this endeavor. Um, we have already previously submitted our position paper to the Comsec, uh, but we would just like to raise two uh, what we feel are um, important points that we would like to be uh, placed on record here. Um, first and foremost, uh, we would like to request or suggest a proposal to add in the functions and duties of the council um, to create and maintain a fund for development of original IP for local producers and creators or for a co-production between a local producer and a foreign producer wherein local ownership is at least 40%. Um, the reason why we say this is because a lot of the creators of original content are not um, are individuals. 
um, they they may be working for a studio, but the the idea is theirs. And some um, and as was expressed earlier, a lot of the areas of our creative uh, creative industries are focused on service. But we have proven a track record also growing in the past five years. It's, it's very short, but um, it is growing that we have successful original Filipino content outside being consumed outside of the country and not even known here in the local, um, in the domestic market. Um, some of these examples are Alpha Besties. This is a 3D animated educational series teaching children how to speak in English and read in English. Uh, this is currently being broadcasted in um, Korea, Taiwan, and Japan, but not in the Philippines. Uh, we also have Barangay 143, which debuted here in the Philippines with GMA7, but they are now also on the different platforms, Netflix, um, and the other local uh, distributors around Asia. And if I'm not mistaken, they recently entered the United Kingdom. We also have authors, amazing writers, fiction writers, like uh, David Anthony Chan from Cebu, who is a best-selling author in the US and in the UK, but he's not known here. So the reason why this happens is because there are a lot of uh, independent creators who are lo looking for support, looking for seed funding, you know, to get things done, uh, but they can't seem to find it here. So they end up looking outside of the country. And nangyayari po, sadly, is that these other countries um, say, oh, well, then it's not primarily a kunyari, American or Korean production, even if you're a Filipino creator, because we're paying for more than, you know, more than 50 or 60 percent of your production cost or your development fee. So that's one reason that we, we, we saw in the different FG, FGDs we've been having um, that a lot of creators would love to maintain it to be Filipino identity, Filipino branded, to proudly say we are Filipino, but they're lacking the support um, financially. So it's one of the suggestions we say we, we propose that perhaps I'm hoping that that can be a consideration. Um, another one, that my last um, suggestion um, uh, to this would be to support uh, initiatives by creator-focused organizations to develop local content creators on both the academic and economic level. Very much as like what um, DepEd said that they are starting in the K-12 system. Um, I, I also sit on two different animation councils in the region. And um, when I get to talk with the uh, um, other people, the creatives from Korea, from Taiwan, from Thailand, that is what they're doing as early po as elementary, as grade four. They already have um, business, side, business side of the creative, not just the creator or not, not just the creative aspect, not learning only how to draw, but learning how to be able to monetize their work as early as grade four. So they're being taught IP, they're being taught copyright, of course, not so in depth, but they're, it's seeded, their minds are seeded with that idea that, hey, I'm not just drawing, drawing lang. You know, I can actually monetize this. This is a valid career path. Um, as a good example, po, I met a surprising one of the FGDs. I met this 15-year-old girl. She's from the Philippines. She is currently earn, she's she's currently writing uh, a webtoon comic for Korea, and apparently she's kind of semi uh, semi hit there, and she's earning five figures to six figures a month at 15 years old. And that's the potential that we have for our creatives, and that's why we are so excited with this bill. Um, we we just would really love to hope to hope that creators also can be recognized. Um, as an individual and an intentional uh, part. Because creators, um, as the IPO Phil, as uh, Director Kuyo has mentioned earlier, no, it is, at the end of the day, it is being copyright-centric that makes, um, you know, is at the core of, of everything we're doing in the creative industries. And we, we would love to see that the future generations will grow and build on this um, effort that you, sir, are doing. You and Senator Marcos have been establishing here. So uh, thank you so much for this opportunity and um, good day, sir. Ah, uh, Magu, ano ulit yung talent to 15 year old? Ano ano yung what 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 is she or she creating? She's creating po webtoon, so it's a Korean style of comics. Di we have the comics that we know like Marvel, DC, no? Then we have the manga, which is the Japanese style of comics. Uh, now, Korea has their own style. It's called webtoons, uh, based on a popular platform there. So similar to so, China, where it's one panel, one frame. So it's more of layout and storytelling devices. So she's at 15 years but, old. Yes, what? She's based here in the Philippines, that, that girl. Yes, yes po. So self-study. Self self yes, po. 
Oh, so, again, to, to going back to the ano na, pero the advantage po that she had was that she had somebody, I think her kuya ata used to work in Korea or something like that. Na he he told her the business side na hey, you're good. You tell a decent story compared to the quality that the Koreans are producing. I, I mean, try it. She tried. She got accepted. She's paid a salary on top of her royalties at 15 years old. Yeah. And 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 if we can get something like that and develop the future generations, it, it is true that the, the dream of having the creative industries as an economic driver for our country is, is something within reach. Kaya, kaya nga, we have to tell uh, more stories like that eh, na para ma 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 madaling maka-inspire yun. Imagine mo yun. No? Mr. As Chair, a, may, may, may alaga kami sa Ilocos, nine years old. Eh, uh, ganun din, hindi webtoons pero yung... Uh, graphic novels, parang may particular talent ang Pilipino. Kasi nakukombine natin yung writing at saka yung visual, yung um, yung uh, drawing and drafting and layouting. Parang nakukombine yung left and right side ng brain. Ika nga, yung Pilipino tells stories that while they are uh, derived from local sources, have universal appeal. Ang problema kasi sa ibang Asia, hindi masyadong worldview. Uh, hindi masyadong malawak yung worldview. Kaya, I agree na sa ating SICA president na talagang may unique contribution ng Pilipino sa area ng webtoons, manga, ng graphic novels, at iba pang mga effort katulad nito. Senator Marcos, if I may just add uh, quickly. Um, we also have another, I forgot his name, I met him briefly, he's a Filipino, but he does naman Western style, um, DC style, Marvel style comics. And it's black and white, it's cross-hatched, meaning pencil lang shading. And he's a big hit in France. Like he is sikat in France and nobody knows he exists here. He doesn't even participate in the local comic groups. So, I mean, we have these stories of individual. And, and when you ask them, so my ask, I ask them, so why not here? Well, they, they all have us the same, ano, no? They usually say, well, kasi lumapit naman ako dito, pero I didn't get the support. Or pinagtawanan ako kasi hindi daw bibenta. And I think one of the edges they had was there was somebody who took the time to tell them, hey, you know, this is the business strategy behind it. This is how you can monetize your work. Right? And, and, and that's true. If you want to have a sustainable creative economy, sustainable creative industry, yes, I'm all for developing the service side. We need that, eh? definitely. But... And I know the argument for the creative, the IP side is that it's matagal. But there are ways, that, and well, if it is matagal, we should definitely start now because the return is really great also. If we can also start, you know, um, creating IP that is consumed globally, that puts our culture the same way how we are now so big fans of K-drama, kimchi, and whatever Korean food there may be because they have been exporting their culture through their webtoons, their, um, their K-dramas. We can do the same. And siguro, make the Filipino truly global po. Siguro dapat si Kap, ikwento ninyo kay, kay Chairman Pimentel yung problema ng animation. Tayo yung kauna-una nag-umpisa niyan, pero puro service industry. Naging ink, ink and color lang lahat halos. So parang cheap labor lang ang Pilipinas. Nag-umpisa sa Disney, lahat ng uri ng Mickey Mouse, pakatapos ganun din yung Japan. Pero parang nais-timey na tayo doon. Kasi ang kailangan ngayon, original content, own copyright. Yun talaga ang next level. Hindi yes, naman Senator pwede Marcos. na nandun na lang tayo forever. But uh, it's so expensive and so long tail. Nobody can sustain it for six, eight years, perhaps, that is necessary to develop a story. So talagang kailangan ng government support. Yes, we totally agree po, Senator Marcos. And to just, if I may just uh, quickly add on what you said regarding that po, yung the, the struggles of the animators. Um, not just for animation, but also in games and also in comics. Now, we, it's funny because we actually, if we, we did a study, we've actually did a study for the past two years. We were tracking this and looking at the numbers, no? Filipinos, if you think about it, we, we, are, we, we are paid the smallest. Let's say for the Avengers movie, you know, we're paid the smallest to work on it, to create the stuff. Pero we have to pay ourselves to watch what we made and we don't even get a piece of the rights so it's it's kind of ironic now we put a lot of the sweatshop that was mentioned here by uh miss jenny you know in the chat we are like a sweatshop pero and like what senator marco said yes it's true we should be owning the ip because if you look at it po, you you earn while doing nothing once it's out there eh? well, as long as it's uh, amazingly um distributed 
and we um and of course we'd also like to recognize that um FDCP has been very active in supporting the animation sector in in that no with with whatever budget they have and you know it's it's nice that they're sharing to the animation and comics and uh game sector thank you so much chair lisa for that um but we, we 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 would just like to hope that maybe the council can consider also putting you know finding a way to have even just a small fund at first and see how to grow that so we can have more of these philip hidden filipino gems become inspirations and aspirations for the next generation of creators for country to drive the economy for of our country thank you so much thank you thank you sir i'm looking forward to your uh, position paper uh, uh magu thank you yes sir yes sir. okay thank uh, you. we have a me we have a message from the directors guild of the philippines mr paolo villaluna they will just be sending their position paper because their signal is uh is intermittent so okay so i hope we can finish in 15 minutes siguro uh, let's try to finish in 15 minutes. So, si Lisa, you want to say something? Pa? Pero wait, one, Lisa, let's give chance Mona first to the uh, to Sheer Dubal of the National Parks Development Committee. Are you still here, ma'am? Good morning, Mr. Chair. Um, let me just manifest... Our, our support to this bill, the National Parks Development Committee is an attached agency of the Department of Tourism, and we strongly support the establishment of a Creative Industry Development Council to promote and preserve our cultural identity and heritage and help boost the country's creative econo economy. The enactment of this bill into law would certainly develop the various creative industries strengthen the intellectual property rights and provide necessary aid and incentives to our very capable and talented Filipino artists. We at NPDC believe that the creative industry is an important driver for the deepening of cultural identity as well as bringing awareness of Filipino heritage and culture to the world. This includes featuring Filipino heritage, and the integration of our culture and history into the products and creation of these different creative industries. We continue to be open to opportunities to work with local artists to showcase their works against oh, the backdrop of Luneta and Paco Park. And we strongly support this move to strengthen our creative industries. This is all. And thank you, Mr. Chair, for inviting us to this meeting. Thank you. Thank you for that uh, manifestation. So, uh, Lisa? Yeah, yes, yes, Mr. Chair. Gusto ko lang pong i-emphasize yung importansya ng funding um, para po may consider po natin together with the creation of the council. Um, Napaka-importante po talaga ng funding. Kung talagang gusto po natin siyang makita as an industry, we really need to support and fund these creative industries and these creative sectors. Just to give you an idea, wala po tayong ginagawa kundi sabihin, ay, ang galing ng Korea! Wow, grabe yung mga pelikula nila, talagang worldwide na, it's great. Uh, 500 million dollars investment by Netflix on Korea just for their projects late this year. But if you look at the budget of just the Korean Film Council alone, it's 100 million dollars. So they are really funding in uh, um, through venture capital funding, meaning nag -nag invest po sila sa mga commercial Korean content. And then they have a support fund for the art house, yung hindi po ganon kalaki yung revenue, just to really activate as well, to incubate and support those um, startups and yung mga um, independent um, sectors po na gumagawa rin ng content. Pero ganun po kalaki ang kanilang support. Yung counterpart agency po ng Creative Industry um, Development Council na, sinas, na binubuo po natin ngayon, it's COCA, the Korean Content Agency, has $460 million in terms of their budget for the support of, um, of, a, of, a, of Korean content. So this is very important for, to invest on our creative industries as we create and solidify and formalize these creative industries. Po. Because ang maganda po dito sa industriya namin, buo na po yung industry. Actually, pagpasok po ng service, meron po tayo. Ito pong IP creation track na, sinusup na sinusuportahan natin. Ito po yung kailangan natin incubate. Pero yung service sector din na kailangan din po natin suportahan ngayon at talagang ongoing po, incoming po lahat 
ng mga projects at services. Just on the FDCP alone, I just want to share with you, we have an incoming project po na ang spend po, one project lang po is 300 million pesos. Um, um, uh, um, se um, distributed as qualified production expense in the different allied sectors. Kailangan po nito ng support na pagdating sa cash rebate po na ibinibigay natin sa kanila. And line, right now po, we have 20 projects na nakalinya po para po magbigay ng suporta sa bansa. So, hindi po tayo manghihinayang sa ibibigay nating support dahil nandyan po, hindi po tayo magbibigay ng, um, pagdating po sa rebates natin, hindi po tayo magbibigay ng rebate kung wala pong papasok na pera dito. So, um, I hope that our uh, committee, of course, Chair and Senator Amy, um, can consider this and will humbly submit all of these data that we already have um, with the launch of the Film Philippines uh, program last year um, so that we can continue and just really galvanize po ito po nga nangyayari ngayon um, currently already dito po sa ating sector. Maraming maraming salamat po. Thank you for that, Lisa. I think Section 6 is the provision involved there. So, bantayan natin yung, yung, yung wording siguro. Pwede natin i-expand or gawing mas eksakto. Thank you. So we have a manifestation from NCCA. They will just submit the position paper. The problem is uh, the internet. Ni ba kasali sa creative industry internet? Ano? Sent to me. No, but. Grabe, malaking bagay. All the reasons given are uh, bad signal. Anyway, <clears throat> so anybody else who wants to be heard before? You were raising your hand, Mr. De Losario, kanina, uh, sir. Yes, yes, sir. No, that, that, to to Senator Imi's point, no, um, hmm. uh, Chair, yung pangalan na Wills Protasio at saka Harvey Tulibao, ah. parehong Pinoy yan, sa Amerika sinasambaho talaga yan, ang Comic-Con. Comic-Con is the biggest animation and comics event in the world. Pinupuntahan niya nila, nila, nila Transformer, lahat ng Hollywood actors. But all that to say, yung dalawang yun pangalan na yun, talagang sinasambaho yun. All this to say that talent is proven and tested. So talagang kailangan lang talaga ho natin ng funding to get these IPs. Uh, and, and, and by the way, uh, yung sweatshop na nabansit kanina, uh, nabanggit kanina, um, I just want to say, well, parang gano na nga nangyari sa animation industry, no? Um, hindi naman ano, no? Uh, I, I, I'm proud to say, uh, Chair, uh, Mr. Chair, that the average salary of even the beginner uh, ng uh, animation artist is already about uh, twenty-eight to thirty thousand a month. No? So yung mga yung mga magagaling talaga, um, they they make as much as 200,000, 250,000 a month. So in other words, uh, ang laki ng variation ng talent talaga. Yung magaling seasoned artist as much as quarter of a million a month. Uh, and, 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 and all the way down to about 20,000. So it's not that bad. However, yes, I agree. We need to elevate our our game to, to IP creation. Kasi nandun na rin yung talent sa so thank you. Uh, the the DOLE will. Uh, uh, I request the DOLE to just submit na lang in the interest of uh, time. Siguro submit your section on labor standards. Uh, very good idea, po. Yan. That's most welcome. Uh, the NHCP will also just submit their position paper according to uh, Ian Alfonso. And the IGA will also submit the position paper to the committee. Thank you. According to Patty Lapos. Okay, anybody else? Mr. Chair, Mr. Okay. Chair, from DTI po. Yes, ma, Yusek Aldaba. Uh, Mr. Chair, I just forgot to mention earlier, uh, but uh, in the preparation of the strategic investment priority plan uh, under the CREATE, we, uh, and uh, as uh, uh, pointed out earlier, the creative sector would fall under Tier 3, and uh, we uh, already created a separate uh, um, section which would contain all the priority uh, sectors under the creative. And hindi po ibig sabihin na uh, yung mga minention kanina, lahat doon magpo-fall. 
Uh, as what Senator Amy uh, emphasized, importante po na priority, magkaroon ng prioritization. And yun po yung magiging output din ng roadmap that we are currently formulating. Yun lang po, Mr. Chair. Thank you. So thank you. Thank uh, you Senator Marcos. Yes, thank you very much, Yusek Aldaba. That's very reassuring kasi medyo nako-confuse sa SIPP ng mga, ang ating mga creatives kung saan sila at uh, kung sakop lahat. Pero I just like uh, to uh, to uh, bring up the fact that uh, there are two pending bills. I think uh, I'm not certain if they've been uh, consolidated as one. They're already Chairman Pimentel, you probably know better. Um, they've already been uh, sponsored in uh, plenary, and these are the bills of uh, Joel Villanueva, Senator Villanueva, and Senator Angara with regard to the gig economy and the contractual workers. Na sa palagay ko, siguro basahin na rin ng ating mga dole uh, group para makita yung uh, labor standards na naroon. Kasi kung minsan yung online workers talagang dehado at uh, abusad, naaabusa, naaabuso. Thank you. Thank you for that. Okay, and according to Ma'am Ria Matute, the, for a city to attract the creative class, there must, it must possess the three T's. <laughs> so talent, tolerance, and technology. So we have to the, the bill the bill will not solve all of this so we have to uh work together no and uh provide all of these re required uh T's to to create a creative city or a creative class Mr. Chair it's not actually it's not from me but it's um it's a it's from the book of Putting, um, yeah. Richard Florida <laughs> just to <laughs> I, I'm not uh it's, they're not my words, but they're really a quotation from um, one of the, the the authors as well as the um, global expert in creative cities and um, the creative class, which is Richard Florida. Yes, that's correct. And according to Mr. Car Carlos Siguion Reina, they will just submit position paper, DGPI and the IGA. So thank you for that, sir, Sir Carlos. So anybody else? Okay, so we have to, I think we have to uh, form uh, our technical working group, no? uh, Centro Aimi, because medyo still a lot of work to be done. Uh, yung composition ng council, maybe the purpose, the funding, according to Lisa, and the reorganization, yung affected, uh, what is the extent of the reorganization of the affected uh, government agencies? Uh, so we will, we will form the technical working group. As soon as possible, invite all of you. Uh, a lot of you have manifested the your intention to be actively involved, so please, uh, please do so. Uh, you, you are most welcome. So, okay, uh, Senator Marcos, any, anything else? Alana, okay. So, on behalf of the committee and of Senator Marcos, uh, I would like to thank everyone for spending time with us, contributing your uh, creativity, your imagination, your genius. Uh, with this committee so that we can uh, we can come up with something to to help the uh, the industry and all of the creative Filipinos that we have uh, see you concern mr uh, Paul uh, Morales uh, we, we have heard it and we, uh, if this bill does not address it we will have to address it in a separate uh, bill sir uh, uh, culture the promotion and protection of culture uh, for its own sake not not for not for commercialization or monetization i i hope i hope i, I got your main message message sir so anyway so thank you very much again so we now uh, i think we can safely terminate our 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 hearing now Santa marcos so we can work on it i uh, work on the bill so okay so with that uh, our our hearing is hereby uh, terminated and thanks again to everyone Bye-bye.